okay we are looking at uh, things flying objects which have four rotors not more than four just four okay we had looked at a simpler one uh, in two dimension but we really did not think about how the spinning of the rotors affects the movement of the drone that's what we'll do here Okay, so that's my simplified uh, quadcopter with four discs to indicate the four uh, rotors and they are spinning about an axis, a vertical axis. Just make it this way. Okay, now here's the interesting thing, uh, two opposite rotors will sp spin in the same direction. So assuming that Z axis is up, is Z, then red, uh, omega two, sorry, omega four. Okay, so what's happening is, if you look from at this, at the omega is from top, you see that omega one and omega three is is this way. So if you look from top, it is counterclockwise. And omega 2 and omega 4 is this way. So it's clockwise. So omega 3 is CCW and omega 2 Omega four is clockwise. Okay, the reason why you want to have these spinning in opposite directions is because uh, you want to ensure the net torque produced by these uh, rotations cancel off. So omega one and omega three sort of will turn the whole thing counterclockwise, but because omega two and omega four are spinning the other way, they're going to basically produce a neg uh, opposite effect or induce a counter a clockwise turning and so that effect will cancel out. Now one thing which you should know is that when the motor spins, it basically creates a lift force and that lift force is 90 degrees. So rotors Produce a lift force at right angles. Okay, so in this case, if the quadcopter is perfectly flat and Z axis up, here we'll see that the thrust force would be in the Z direction, and the thrust force is proportional to the angular speed. Okay, and so we can just for simplicity, let's assume that the, co the proportionality constant is constant. So thrust is K time omega square. And this K is the lift uh, constant. Okay, in, or the force in the Z direction is K times Omega one square plus omega two square. Okay, and this is when I say FZ, it's in the world, it's in the, it's in the body frame. By body frame, I mean if this uh, quadcopter rotates by an angle and z-axis is at some angle, then that force will be in that particular direction. So if 
So let me just maybe do it here. Let's call that FZ prime actually. And so if the quadcopter is this way, the Z is, is upwards. If the quadcopter is tilted, Z prime would be at an angle. So the, the, the Z force, the thrust was always right angles to the quadcopter. Okay, it's in the body frame. Okay, now one thing you might ask is, how, how is this even possible? You have omega one and omega three spinning uh, counterclockwise and omega two and omega four spinning clockwise. How can they all generate a thrust force acting upwards? You would think that omega one and omega three would generate a thrust force upwards, but omega two and omega four would generate a thrust force acting downwards because it's spinning the opposite way. Now, this is one thing you will, if you actually look at the rotors, you'll see that the design of the rotors are that the omega two and omega four are actually flipped from that in omega one and omega two. What I mean by that is if you just, for example, search for Let's search for quad copter rotors. And we need a pair of, pair of four. Maybe this is a good one. Okay, so you see that the blades on the left side have uh, have the the blades in one direction and the blades on the right side have the blades in the other direction. That's because you will mount those two blades. Those two blades in pairs are on the opposite side. So you cannot just buy four random blades and strap it on the quad copter. It will not work. You need blades which are oriented in the right way and you need to mount the right place. So it's always the case that you mount this in such a way that um, all the quad cop all the rotor blades when mounted and the speed in the spin in this direction will give you a thrust force which is acting upwards. Okay, so remember that it's kind of important. If you do replace the blades, you need to do be mindful of that. Uh, okay, now that we have uh, got the drag force, so the lift, the thrust force, uh, let's see what else is produced by the symbol combination of uh, rotors. Okay, so we'll talk about the forces in the other two directions, the rotational uh, forces due to these um, rotors. Okay, so let me fix an axis in the previous figure. It'll help me to do this. So let's assume that uh, X is this way. Y is this way and Z is up. Okay. I'm also going to assume that the distance between the two rotors, the diagonal rotors is L. Okay. And those gravity is here. Let's just copy this figure. Okay, so now let's let's try to understand what's how we can sort of control this or what are the effects of spinning uh, these motors at different speeds. So first of all, what you want to do is in order to get the drone to stay upright, you want to ensure that the thrust force produced by all these uh, the sum equals the gravitational force, right? Because FZ is acting in the the the, the a rotor, if you, uh, a quadcopter, if you place it in, in the world frame, it'll just fall down. So you want to ensure that the sum is always equal to mg. And that will show, I'll show you in simulation how to do that. And that's one thing. The other thing you want to think about is what will happen if I start uh, spinning the motor at different speeds. Uh, for that, let's try to understand what are the torques induced by these motors. So let's look at These two rotors, omega two, omega four. Okay. We know that they produce a thrust force upwards. Okay. 
speak on. Okay, so K omega four square, K omega two square, and let's draw this axis. This is my x-axis. Okay, so now what's happening is I'm just considering the effect of the thrust force on each of those uh, produced by each of those rotors. Now, that's the thrust force I've shown, and assuming that it's perfectly flat, uh, what happens is the k omega two square induces a rotation this way, that right, when you see from here, and the left one induces a rotation in the other direction. So the net rotation about this axis, x axis, is going to be. Tau x, right? Since it's of the x-axis, is k. So omega four gives me a. This is. Let me draw counterclockwise. This is counterclockwise. So it's counterclockwise when you see it from the x-axis, and so k omega two square is going to induce a rotation which is counterclockwise, right? So k omega two square times uh, L divided by two, because the distance between the rotors is L, so half of that. And then K omega four square is going to induce uh, opposite rotation. So negative, that's right. Okay. So my bad, so this is, the, the angles will be flipped. And that's because it's, it's basically works as the reaction, right? So I need to flip the angles to my, uh, the signs because it's reaction. So tau x is going to be K L divided by two omega four square minus omega two square. Okay, so this is, the effect of thrust force on the rotation of the quadcopter about the x-axis. Similarly, I can, okay, I'm almost out of time. Let me finish this and I'll, I'll be done. So let me draw the other two um, rotors and see what the effect of is of this thrust forces due to the other two. So let's draw omega one, Omega three, the thrust force here is going to be K omega one square, K omega three square. And then this is the line and this uh, is my Y axis, like I've shown in the figure here. Why? Okay, so same logic, which is if I, if I only look at the effect of k omega one, it will lead to a rotation this fashion. So k omega one square, that will be give me the, the moment down because the, the distance between the two rotors is L. And the other one will produce an exactly opposite uh, effect. I'll divide by two. And then for the sign, clearly they're going to be equal and they're going to be opposite signs. Uh, since it's a reaction talk, we would have, uh, this would be negative and this would be positive. So tau x, so tau y. So tau y is k l divided by two. We got three square minus so we got one square. Okay, so moving on, let's see what's the effect of uh, spinning each of these motors. So we have the X direction and due to the thrust force induced by omega two and omega four, you will see that there's a torque about the x-axis. 
And I, I did a mistake here, which I just realized, which is this direction is incorrect. Okay, so let's figure out the right uh, direction. So the torque due to this one, this thrust force is going to be in the counterclockwise direction when viewed from the X direction like this, right? So it will be in this way. When you view from here, it is counterclockwise. So that is positive and that's why the positive here. And this thrust force due to, sorry, the torque due to omega two is going to be in the clockwise direction. That's why it is negative. And so this all this is now correct. Okay, now we can do the same thing for the y direction. So we consider pairs omega one, omega three. Now, if uh, let's look at omega three first. This one has thrust force upwards. So this one would cause a torque to be applied in the counterclockwise when viewed from the positive y direction. So this is a, there's a positive sign. So I made an error in the direction there too. And then this one would induce a clockwise torque this way. And so there's a negative sign. And so now it's all consistent. Okay, maybe I'll just make a note there. And sometimes it's difficult to understand. This is counterclockwise from plus X. And then this is counterclockwise from plus Y. Okay, so what we have so far is these uh, three, three things. One is we figured out what the force is in the Z direction. We figured out what the torque is in the X direction and then the torque in the Y direction. There's one more thing left, which is the torque in the Z direction. So that next. Okay. And what we're interested here is uh, we want to compute what is the net torque in the z direction. So this is the positive z as you look so counterclockwise when you view from top. Okay, let's me put the different uh, speeds on this. So omega. One, I drew this way. Omega three is in the same direction. Omega two is the other direction. And then omega three is, sorry, omega four is in the same direction, omega two. Okay, so let's compute what is the torque about the z-axis. Okay, so we know that the, the torque is always proportional to the angular speed. And so let's figure out the, the effect due to omega one. Since omega one, the direction of omega one is the same as the direction of the counterclockwise rotation, it's going to induce a positive torque. So omega one square. Similarly, omega three is going to introduce counterclockwise stuff because of its direction is the same as counterclockwise. And then omega two and omega four are going to induce clockwise stuff. Now this constant is different from the constant we wrote down earlier. So remember I had a constant for K, the lift constant. Okay, so this one induces a thrust or a force. Its units, units are going to be thrust. So thrust units are newtons and speed is radians. So radians per second square. But this, this constant is going to be a different one. Let's call it B. 
and it is called the drag constant. And you can see the units of the drag constant are going to be it's Newton meter for torque divided by radians per second square. Okay. Now, where do these constants come from? Drag constant and the lift constant, they are aerodynamic terms, which comes from aerodynamics of uh, the rotor blades, which is not sort of beyond this uh, course. Uh, you just have to accept that that's what's true. In fact, if you can do a simple experiment where you where you spin these, if you know that the torque Z and you know the angular speed, uh, which is in a controlled setup, you can actually figure out the drag constant and the uh, uh, lift constant. These are typically done in a uh, enclosed setup where they can control the speeds and compute the drag. Okay. Okay, so what we have so far, let's just summarize. So we have computed FZ, which is the force in body V direction. And then we've computed tau x, tau y, tau z, which are the torques. In these are also in body x, y, z direction. In other words, these will change as the uh, as the as the copter rotates. Now we know that for a three-dimensional object, there are uh, three forces which you can you can think of: force in x, y, z, and the torques in x, y, z. However, the only four things you can control here are uh, forces in z, and then the torques in x, y, z. You cannot control the forces in the x and y direction directly. Okay, you cannot control fx, fy, uh, cannot, cannot induce forces in x, y direction. Okay, so the system is underactuated. Okay, so what that means here, we can write it down. So we have six state variables, and these are x, y, z, theta. P psi, but there are four control variables. Okay, these are, you can either think of them as Fx, sorry, Fz, tau x, tau y, tau z, or omega 1, omega 2, omega 3. Right? So typically you can only control omega one, omega two, omega three, and omega four, but there are combinations, uh, that is the squares, when you add, subtract them the right way, you can compute fx, tau x, tau y, tau z. So you can either control, think of those four numbers, f, the forces and tau as control variables, or you can use omega one, but there's a one-on-one -on -one mapping between the two. So either way is fine. Okay, so before we get to um, controlling the, the quadcopter, let us write the equations now that we have the forces. 
So here's how we'll compute the equations of motion. Okay, so I'm going to follow the same Euler Lagrange methodology. First, figure out the positions. Here we have X, Y, Z, and then we'll use uh, Euler angles. For the velocities, we have X dot, Y dot, Z dot, and the Euler rates, E dot, eta dot, psi dot. But remember the Euler rates mean nothing, right? We need to convert the Euler rates into meaningful angular speeds. And in this case, in the case of uh, 3D dynamics, we always look at the body frame angular velocity because we're going to use the body frame inertia. Okay, so omega B is the body frame angular velocity. It has got three components, omega B X, omega B Y, omega B Z. And this is something I derived in the class on uh, angular velocity, this giant expression composed of uh, R matrices, R dot. Uh, you can write the angular speed in, in three to one, which is the Euler, Euler convention we chose, dyx as zero minus sine theta zero cosine phi cos theta sine phi zero minus sine phi cos phi it is this way cos theta cos phi and then Euler rates phi dot theta dot psi dot okay so we've we have all the kinematics. Now we can proceed to compute the Lagrangian. Second step, compute uh, T of M X dot square, Y dot square, Z dot square minus or plus of um, here we'll assume that the inertia is diagonal. So it's omega transpose uh, I Mega B, so this comes out to be mega B X, mega B Y, mega B C. And you take the transpose of this, so it becomes one cross three. In inertia is a diagonal matrix. So we assume it's I X, I Y. So in the body frame, you're assuming that the inertia is symmetric. Okay, again, if it's not symmetric, then you can put it in the right value, then you get it. So I'm just assuming it's symmetric, but if it's not symmetric, just put the value you want. And then we have omega bx, omega by omega bz. Okay, remember that we do not have access to omega bx directly. We need to then convert them to Euler rate, which we can now that we already have an expression for the, the angular speed, omega b, so we'll put that here. And then the potential energy is mgz, z for height. And the Lagrangian is T minus V. Okay. Now we've got a Lagrangian. Let's use the Euler Lagrange equations. T dt of TL dq dot minus TL dq. J equals 
QJ, these are the external forces. Okay, Q, the small Q, R X, Y, Z, theta, uh, sorry, pi dot, theta dot, psi dot, Q, J are the external forces, uh, F external, R external. Okay, I'll write them down what they are but they, they would be a six cross one matrix where uh, F XL would have X, Y, Z components and tau XL would have uh, again, X, Y, Z components. Okay, so, uh, this is kind of obvious. This one is less obvious. So let's let's figure this out. What these f external and tau externals are? We already computed them, but we need to do something else to write them in as QG. Okay. So what is f external? Okay, it's the external force in the x y z direction. Uh, so we we've, we've figured out so far that we have. zero for fx, zero for fy, and fz is the force in the z direction, right? So if you have a quadcopter, then this is, the, it's called a z prime. So it's going to be in the, along the z axis, but the z axis is not the global z, it's not the world frame z. It's always moves with the, with the quadcopter. Now, we need to write these forces. Remember these forces are the forces acting in the global X, Y, Z. So we need to rotate the external force from the body frame to the world frame. And the easiest way of doing that is to multiply it with the rotation matrix. So take the rotation matrix. This is the three, two, one, uh, Z, Y, X rotation matrix. And when you multiply the rotation matrix with the body frame vector, you get a world frame vector similar to what we've done in the past, right? And that rotation matrix would be uh, C. Okay, it's a very, uh, A fairly long expression. I don't want to write it again. Uh, so basically, you need to do R Z about uh, you write the simplest expression I can without writing the whole expanded version of it. Yeah, it is RZ about, so rotation about the Z axis, but that rotation is Psi. Then we have rotation about the Y, that would be Theta. And then rotation about the X, this will be Phi. So take these rotation matrix and multiply them, and then you have this R. Okay, now, We'll do another assumption. We'll assume that uh, there is a drag force. So, so the drag force is something which is again uh, empirical properties. Like when you put this system inside, when, when things are spinning fast and there is fast enough speed, then the, then the speed of the air matters. And so we add a drag force, which is proportional to the velocity. 
AX, VX, AY, VY, AZ, VZ. Where a x a y is drag uh, force constant, and this one is proportional to velocity. Okay, Vx, Vy, Vz is actually I should have written down. So we can write this as x dot, y dot, z dot. Think of them, think of it like uh, viscous damping, right? Viscous damping is proportion to x, y, and z. And then we need to write the external torque. Okay, now this external torque is the same as the one we found. It is actually in body frame because if you look back to this figure, here this this force the torque in the z direction is going to change. So when this uh, quadcopter rotates about say, the z axis, something like this, new z this torque will be the same torque because now the Rotors are doing the same thing. They're spinning in the same direction as before. Right? So as the quadcopter rotates, the torque in the Z direction is going to be the torque I just wrote down there. And the same applies for uh, X and Y. That is, when the quadcopter rotates, well, the, when the quadcopter changes the axis, the X and Y will rotate and it will induce the same torque. So these are already in body frame. And so I don't need to worry about uh, changing them. So this would be KL omega four square minus omega two square, KL omega three square minus one square, and then B times omega one square minus omega two square, omega one square plus omega three square minus omega Two square minus omega four square. Yes, yeah, so we can write the QJ as. Something like this R times zero zero K times omega one square plus omega two square plus omega three square plus four square zero zero minus AX, X dot, AY, Y dot, AZ, Z dot, and then KL, of four square, KL omega three square minus square, B, Omega one square, omega three square, okay, I think I might have missed something. Let me just see this. So the, yeah, should, it should be half, right? Because the length is L and so the torque, this, this half comes because uh, it's the moment about this axis, it's this axis. So I'm missing that. Go back and fix it. This will be 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. So this is a six cross one equation.
Yes, we are not done yet because we now need to write the equations. Uh, the equations, remember, came from uh, the Euler-Lagrange equations. I've identified what Q, capital QJ is. I still need to do this differentiation, which I can do. Uh, I don't want to do it by hand because of these last three terms. They will induce a very nasty looking expression. So I'm better off just doing it using uh, SymPy. Uh, the end result of this calculation is something which looks at the final step. You can uh, using Euler Lagrange. We can write the following expressions. In that A X equals B, where A is six cross six, X is six cross one, B is six cross one, where uh, X is going to be X double dot, this is capital X, not small X, uh, Y double dot, Z double dot, P double dot, theta double dot, Psi double dot, transpose. So it'll give you an uh, expression for the acceleration, like we always get an expression for the acceleration. We integrate it once to get the velocity, integrate it another time to get the positions, and, and we can use that to um, simulate the quadcopter and also anyway. Let's see how to uh, do this using uh, SymPy and then do animation using uh, OD integration. Okay, so define all the quantities of interest as symbolic variables. Uh, I've tried to follow the same Lagrange methodology, position and angles. So get the rotation matrix, which is going to be multiplication of ZYX. Get the angular velocity. This is the angular velocity formula I wrote down there. Uh, just can get it in one line, so having to write that question. Uh, inertia is a diagonal term. Uh, v is the velocity, okay? And then uh, I have the uh, kinetic energy, potential energy, so you can see it's very compact because I compute omega p by using uh, this simplified expression. And then uh, thrust force, this is zero, zero fx. Drag force, the external force is R plus minus drag. The force is in the X, Y, Z. I should we put X, Y, Z. Uh, but they can also look at them in terms of uh, the direction of the X, which is P, theta, and psi. So then tau external is these three torques, which I wrote down. Uh, so then I just join them to make this one big matrix of all the external forces. And maybe I should call that, uh, it should be called Q external. Okay, so Q, Q dot, this is the, the this is the code which converts those, takes those expressions and writes the equations of motion. You don't have to, the only thing you need to modify there would be give the right dimensions for the, the Q, Q dot, that is the degrees of freedom and it will do it for you. Okay, A matrix is the Jacobian, B is the right-hand side, which I can smartly compute by putting zeros through the accelerations and then whatever left is the right-hand side, which is B. And then this is write some code which simplifies the expression. So let me run this. Okay. Line is this? Why is not defined? Okay. It's still some uh, typo in my. Okay, so this is producing A and then the B matrix which I can then take and copy in my right-hand side for uh, the simulator. So this is the simulator where I essentially copy paste these A, B matrices to go somewhere. Yeah, A and the B, that's the right-hand side. Okay, so then the, everything else in this code is what we've done before, which is you basically have an ODE function, which calls 
that right hand side. Uh, where is it? Okay, that's it. OD into. Okay. This caused the equations of motion, which I just copy pasted. And then it passes all the parameters, which I gave some numbers. And then I have a somewhere I have a controller there. Okay, this is my controller where I can change the speed. So this is, for example, omega one, omega two, omega three, and I put some differential. Let's just run this. Okay, so that's the card copter. And now, right now, uh, what I've done is I put some speed, okay, and everything can see is zero. And then you can see that the card copter is started with a zero speed at some position and just falls down. And that's because the rotor speed is not fast enough for the card copter to lift up. What I can do in order to, for it to stay afloat is to go back to these equations. Okay, when the card copter is perfectly uh, horizontal, R is identity. Uh, the forces, I, I, I think I put zeros for this, so don't worry about them. The zero, zero and FZ for the Z force. So if I can ramp up the speed, then I can find a speed at which the quadcopter will be floating. Now also assume that all the speeds are the same. So, so that way uh, this difference is zero, this difference is zero and this sum plus difference is zero. So everything here is zero. It's not going to be rotating, but it's only going to be Applying a thrust to so by so changing omega one, I should be able to keep it upright. Let's do that. Okay, I put one. Let's put two. Okay, so that's just control speeding it up. Okay, now it just flies in there. So one is too too small. Two is too much. It sped, sped very fast. Let's make it one point two. You can see it's going slowly up, right? And then I think I found that it's 1.075 is the optimum. And I can see it's just floating, okay? It's just not magically floating, it's because I'm putting a speed, uh, a force in the Z direction, which just balances the force due to gravity. Okay, so that's, that's showing you the effect of uh, this term, okay? Now let's see how, what's the effect of, of these terms. That is, how can you induce it to turn in the X and Y direction? So this torque gives you turning in the X, Y, and then rotation about the Z. Okay, so now we need to find the values for omega such that these two are zero. That is the, whatever that difference is zero, but this is non-zero. So what we can do here is, uh, I'd keep omega three and omega one the same. This will be zero. Uh, if I change omega four slightly more compared to omega two, then I'll get a rotation about the x axis. Uh, but then what will happen here? So this, it will, it will start rotating also. We can just try that. So let's just keep omega three, omega one constant, but just try to increase omega four slightly. We should cause it to spin about the x axis. Let's, let's go here. And what I did was to make it easy for me, I just put speed one, two. Okay, so I can change individual speed. Just uh, increment, because remember, if I, if I remove the speeds, then it's going to fall down. So I need to keep, keep the speed, whatever that value I found, but I need to bump up the speed in the, in the appropriate motor, rotor. So let's change the speed. I said omega four. Let's just change it to point two. So now it's turning about as fast. Uh, point one. So it's turning about this red, red which is the x-axis, right? which is what we found, which is it should turn about the x-axis because that expression made it turn about the x-axis. Uh, we can do the same thing with uh, y, which is keep omega four same as omega two and change omega three or omega one. 
let's change omega one this time because omega one is going to give a counterclockwise spin about the y axis. So go back to the equation, change s to zero. Omega one, let's increase to point 0.1. And so now the y axis is the green. So you see it's spinning about the green. This is the green, and you can see it's spinning about the green. So it's rotating about the green axis. Okay, and then finally, if you want to turn it about, uh, uh, so finally, let's see how to turn it about the, the z-axis. But when we do so, we need to ensure that it doesn't spin about this axis. So what we can do is, we can we need to keep omega four and omega two the same, and omega three and omega one the same. That way, these are zero. But then we will have to increase. Uh, these two in proportional to that. How can we do that? I think if you increase, uh, let's see, can you even get that? So if I increase omega one and omega three, for, for example, then this term would be greater than this term. And so it will spin about the z axis. But omega three and omega one are increased with the same amount, so then there will be no spin about the y axis. So I can increase both. I have to increase the speeds of both these motors to make it turn. Uh, in this case, counterclockwise uh, counter with respect to z axis. So let's just do that. So here, uh, here we'll change the speed of the set one and three. One and three. And now it only spin about the. So you see it's spinning. Let's increase it a little bit further. Spinning a little faster. So what's happening here is it's spinning about the z-axis because our equation said so, right? Uh, these two terms are zero, so there's no net moment, but this term is greater than that one, so it's spinning. But then the effect of that is also felt in the z-direction because now omega-1 and omega-3 are increasing, so they have they compare, they'll have a higher uh, force than due to gravity, so it will start moving up. So it's so like you can see that when you try to do something here, it moves something else somewhere else, and that's why it's kind of tricky. And also the fact that this I only was able to control it in the in the z direction and uh, rotate about the x, y, and z. You still don't have control over the x and y motion, that is the linear motion. In order to control it in the x, y direction, what you need to do is uh, you know, first tilt the quadcopter by an angle. And so then FZ would be right angles. So it will basically induce a force, a component in the X and the Y direction, and then you'll be able to move. So the way you can do this is, let's see, I can try to do this. I've not done this before. So first we will okay, the simplest way to do is to rotate them quadcopter. So let's go to the place where I've defined the angles. Okay, uh, this is the angle with respect to the x-axis. So let's just change it to 0.2. Okay, so it's been, it's tilted now. And because it's tilted, the force is no longer in the z direction, but there's an angle to the z direction. So now that force will induce a motion in the z direction, in the x direction. And also it'll move, of course, in the uh, upward direction if the force are unbalanced. In fact, I think it'll go down because the component is not equal to gravity. So let's run this. It's hard to see because it's coming towards you. Let's just do it in the other direction. Because, uh, the, the now it should move on the right side, yeah. Okay, so my bad. So this theta is about the Y axis, so it's going to actually move it along the X axis. Let's try a little bit more. Okay, so if you, yeah, let me, I think it should make this clear why it's moving about the X axis when you turn it about the Y axis. Is what I was doing in the last last animation was uh, we have x. I think it was x, y, and z. 
And so what I did was I rotated it by 30 degrees or 0.5 about the y axis. That means the quadcopter was this way. So that it's normal, makes an angle of uh, 0.5. about the y-axis. So when it does that, this is the normal Fz. This normal will induce a force in this direction, which will be Fz cosine of uh, 0.5. And it'll also induce a force in this direction Force in this direction will be Fx equals Fz sine of 0 0.5. And that's why it moved about the x-axis, not about the y-axis, even though I tilted it about the y-axis. Okay, so this is how you would control an unraptured system. You first tilt it. The way you tilt it is, is by uh, inducing our torque in the y direction. So I showed you that there was a there were omegas which could control that. Once it tilts, you can turn it back to the same speed. And then you'll see that it starts flying to the right or left, depending on the magnitude of the direction of uh, Fz. So you can actually intuitively get this going by just, you know, hand tune a controller just by noting how those torques in this equation affects the system. Just by looking at those this QJ, you can you can basically control the car copter to go left, right, up, down, spin, and so on. So that's the key. This equation.